we have number 133. This is self-portrait as a soldier, and it is a self-portrait of Ernst Ludwig Kirchner. It was painted in 1915, and it is an oil on canvas piece. Uh, just to remind you guys a little bit, Kirchner was one of the founding members of the bridge, the German Expressionist movement I talked about in the historical context. And the idea was that the group wanted to do, you know, they had their big manifesto, but they wanted to create a bridge or a link between their art and modern revolutionary ideas that we had talked about, like um, Einstein, Freud, and Jung, um, and also a bridge between what was new art along with the traditional sense of art. So the artists of the bridge modernized both the spiritual abstraction that we saw in the medieval world, because remember, a lot of that work was abstracted because they didn't want it to be idols, but, um, and then they also wanted to incorporate some of the German geometric aesthetic of African art and oceanic art that they are now being exposed to through uh, colonialism. So, um, so he, Kirchner and others in Die Brücke or the bridge wanted to um, integrate those with um, mo mechanical forms in the city. And that's what we're seeing on the left side. I mean, we definitely have like this, the colors are very expressive, just like Matisse, the angular qualities right here, mask-like faces here. Um, these are supposed to be like street scenes in Berlin before the war break, broke out. Um, so he definitely used color for expression, which is a hallmark of the German Expressionist movement. It was typically brilliant and energized color, but also would include harsh, angular, and vivid, sometimes garish shapes or horrible shapes that reflect a pretty pessimistic view on society. Kirchner was um, depressed most of his life and he will, when he does um, pass away, he does um, die by suicide. Um, so, but just a little bit more on obviously on Kirchner. Later on, um, he's going to be inspired by the Vienna Secessionist Movement, which is Gustav Klimt's movement, as well as Munch and Van Gogh and non-Western art. So the piece that we need to know for um, this class is um, very much influenced by Cubism. I mean, the flatness, the, um, you know, no perspective, uh, definitely kind of rings true with Picasso's uh, um, The Demoiselle de Avignon, but um, it's definitely, the purpose of it is definitely different than what Picasso was trying to do. Um, this is a product of Kirchner's experience during the First World War. Since he's German, especially in World War I, Everybody served in the military, and he certainly didn't agree with the war and didn't want to fight. So he was able to get, um, he was able to become an in what they call an involuntary volunteer, meaning he had a job where he wasn't actually fighting. Um, so this phrase does not imply his forced participation, but rather he enlisted in the field in an, a, a unit where he be there was a prestigious position where he would basically be the driver. So um, he, he's trying to find the, the job that has the least amount of danger. He only really lasted six months and he was released because he had really bad anxiety. He had um, lung problems and both of those were exacerbated by lack of eating and heavy alcohol and drug abuse. Um, he eventually will return to the service because it is a long war and they needed everybody possible. Uh, but eventually he was found physically and mentally unfit for the military. And so therefore he never actually even participated in combat, um, but he did, it was obviously exposed to the horrors of it. And so he incorporates the horror in his works around representations of wartime symbolism. So this one was painted pretty you know, early on in the war, 1915, uh, and it is going to document the artist's fear 
that war would destroy his creative powers and in a broader sense symbolize the reactions of the artists of this generation who suffered the physical and mental damage. And so, I mean, not only are they suffering physically, like we see with, I mean, Kirchner never lost his hand, but if you're a painter or like a surgeon, your hand is your, um, you know, your main connection to your profession. And so for them, it was almost like they're like emasculating or preventing him from doing his job. But not only is it a physical injury, but it also can be seen as a mental um, injury as well. Like even though he still has his hand, he can't paint or he can't create because he can't get past the demons that are in his mind from the what we now call PTSD, what World War I people called shell shock. He couldn't get past it. Um, and that was that was true for many of the artists and writers and people who were were. Um, creatively expressive um, in the years during and after the war. Okay, so let's see. Kirchner is, um, he uses arbitrary intense colors. They're joined with intensely stylized figures with a distortive perspective to communicate his observations on the quickened pulse and anxiety of modern life. In a way, the painting responds to Favism. The colors used are rich and deep, that deep dark blue. Um, the background behind the nude is, you know, like a black mirror. Um, and then also that is stark with the reds and the pinks um, that we see in other parts of this piece. The figures are dehumanized. I mean, we can tell that they're human, but they don't look accurate. Um, they almost have mask-like faces. And then the depiction in the, of the nude in the back particularly shows that influence of primitivism and Kirchner's appropriation of art, African stylistic ideas that we saw with um, Picasso's La Demoiselle d'Avignon. Neither figure is drawn to scale. Meaning we, I mean, we, we can assume that the person behind him is behind him, but it's not really obvious how far behind him he is. Um, and so, um, the painting w implies distance between the foreground and background due to the difference in the size of each figure. He uses sharp angular lines, creating a composition that evokes a sense of violence or angst which is underscored with those red tones. You know, red is that color of, of anxiety, of fear, of blood. You know, that's, you know, red is really a, a very expressive color to use. That canvas that he uses is sharply divided between left and right by the figure of the soldier that runs vertically across the entire work. And then a powerful diagonal movement from the lower right to the upper left runs across the work, which is part of that jagged or blade-like, what looks like a mirror. Um, the absence of the soldier's hand, which would have been the same hand Kircher used to paint, is again expressing Kirchner's fear of being artistically castrated or amputated by the war if his hand had been lost in some way. But it also could be you know, the, ment the mental emasculation. Uh, the nude in the background might also some imply some fear of, um, you know, maybe some sexual impotence or uh, not um, having, being able to sustain relationships at, as a result of the, uh, the um, mental harm that World War I caused. Um, this piece is pretty powerful. Um, and then the other pieces that are there, I talked about, um, at the very beginning of this one, um, the space is really crowded. None of the figures really connect with each other. If you look at it, everyone seems kind of like on their own. Um, the, the smaller piece on the side is about five years later in Berlin. And the focus is actually on prostitutes. 
Um, and then uh, just in the future, when the Nazis come to power, because he stays in Germany, Kirchner is going to be dismissed at the academy where he taught art. And then they're going to confiscate all of his art, and it's going to be dubbed as degenerate art. Or um, look up degenerate if you don't know what it means. Uh, Kirchner's work is later going to be exhibited by the Nazis as degenerate art uh, in 1937. And it was supposed to, or was in, meant to demonstrate that modern art was created by artists who were insane or deviant. And the Nazis retitled this Soldier with a Whore in the exhibit. Now this, so, this show toured Germany until 1941 and over 3 million viewers saw it and not all of them believed in that idea of degenerate art. So Kirchner's work actually got even more influence and more, um, uh, more of an audience as a result of the degenerate art um, show that was organized by the Nazis. Unfortunately though, um, Kirchner um, succumbed to his demons in 1938 and committed suicide at the age of 58. That is a self-portrait of a soldier by Kirchner.